Good morning, people. See you from Sobral, the Baira Alta of Portugal, the highlands uh, where we've been riding around the last couple of episodes. And uh, hope you're doing good out there on the other side. Uh, here we got one hell of a cracking day, as you can see. Uh, I can barely do without the sunnies right now. And having a nice Portuguese uh, brekkie here with uh, delicious, fresh bread. And that's probably the only bread uh, that's maybe better than the one in Chile. Tranquilo, Eonis. It's just, it's also very tasty bread, just like the bread in Chile was. Coffee and some fresh OJ. Not just any OJ, but OJ that I picked down there from the orange trees. So it's absolutely fresh. Plucked today, squeezed today, and drinking it today. You might be uh, far away out from uh, the civilized world, the coastal cities, but out in a place like this, that's uh, that's something pretty sweet, though. Uh, you can pick your own uh, fruit. There's all sorts uh, out here, and uh, kind of taking a liking to that. So, what's the plan for today? Well, uh, Christmas is coming somewhere towards the end of this week, and uh, I gotta get down to the Algarve where I'm gonna spend it with family and we're probably going to spend two days riding because it's about 650 700 kilometers altogether i'm um, sure i could do it in one day but uh, i figured why not make it two and we can uh, give the route down south a bit of extra attention because i've got new tires no not correct i've got new tire on the back that's the most important one so maybe we'll throw some off-road some tet i'll tell you more about it later we're ready riding on again and it's going to be uh, I reckon a two-day ride because uh, after Santa de Estrela I'm going to look for some off-road on the Trans Euro Trail that should be fun you might be like off-road Pedro with those tires you know you did a little bit but come on well it's because I got a near rear a nice fat Heidi K60 Scout uh, which I uh, had sent here and put it on yesterday at the shop which was uh, first a chore to find someone who was willing to do it but in the end we did though the problem well problem with this Heidi is this middle line I was not as expecting this my first 50-50 tire was a Heidi that I put on in Central Asia and it had like a V pattern a W pattern uh, this one has that thing in the middle that bridge I'm not a fan of it I think it will rotate off-road in places where it shouldn't Plus it looks like it can drop off to the side once you're off that middle line. So it probably will have a tendency to drop now in the corners. And I read up on it, turns out it's not the greatest wet tire. Well, I got it because it had a reputation for wet. I think that's the other one though. So, hey, we'll find out. Let's uh, hit the road, eh? All right. Whoa, too soon. to go Ooh. to the Christmas a nice sunny at least I think it is warm Algarve well officially I'm still breaking in this tire but this section of road here up to the crest is just uh, it's just a bomb as a kid I would sit in the car and think hey man when I was like 15 once I get a scooter maybe I can get it here in the Netherlands somehow and ride down this road <laughs> and here we are with good old Atlas I'm beginning to say her name right away you'll notice that sometimes I still almost say Alp but I've been correcting myself look at that gorgeous day well we've seen this view before we're gonna cross that's right before we head down to the Algarve, we're going to cross to the other side of Serra de Estrela. Because we, we were almost at the highest point and I didn't go, I didn't know. We're going to go to the highest point, then drop off on the Spanish side, close to the Spanish border. Then we're going to find us some off-road. 
like this sweeping corner here. <laughs> I can feel there's something there, you know? The tire. All right. We're coming for you, Wiggly Roads. You good old twa, right in the middle. <laughs> Manhole cover. Give me Atlas, but you're going to be uh, hauling ass for a little bit. Up the mountain. But uh, if a Trans Alp has proven anything over the years is that that's very much in the capabilities of this sweet motorcycle. Sharp ass corner. Puto bueno. Vamos lá. Serra da Estrela. Gotta go up there. And so it begins. Did about 60, 70, 80 kilometers on the new Heidi's. Still need about uh, a little bit more to officially. Oh, manhole right in the corner inside. Anyway, <laughs> still breaking them in, so you gotta watch it. as a kid but this might be the first time I see snow in Portugal at least conscious consciously uh, it's definitely a bit more nippy up here obviously and I gotta watch the wet patches more now <laughs> wonder if those domes are like weather stations <laughs> nice look at those They've been around a long time. What are those radar domes then? Whoa. Let's see, how fast did we get here? 17 minutes earlier than predicted. Well done, Atlas, well done. All right, let's do the important stuff first, like play with the snow. There's actually a tour, because this area is called Tour. And I wondered if it's because it's the top of the mountain. But there's actually a tower there, because Tour means tower. Let's go, uh, let's go grab some snow, eh? Yeah, boy. Need my private. Oh, it's a drop. Dunk. Need my private snow pile. Yeah. Proper Portuguese snow. I think it's probably just as high as... Australia's highest point, what? Kosciuszko? But when I was up there, unfortunately, it was raining and fog really bad and I was all wet. But now I get to go to the top of Portugal. Beleza. So here, we are at 2,048 meters. This area is the highest point in Portugal, that is continental Portugal, because the Azores has a peak, the island, 
which is about at least 300 meters higher. Stoked to be here because I still need to christen Atlas with snow, just like I did Alp for the first time in, um, in the Alps. So Atlas, God bless you. Let the thousands year old spirits of the Lusitani people guide you up and down the twisty mountain roads. Let them roll you freely through those treacherous but oh so fun hairpins. Let them find you those off-road tracks that may lead you to ruin but also lead you to amazing great heights. Amen. All right, let's keep on moving and get to the other side of the mountain because we got about four, four and a half hours of daylight left for the day. Ah, this is beautiful. Gotta come back here one day when it's all snow. But first, let's get a nice shot of this place. Well, I told you the Heidi's were gonna get us in trouble. <laughs> so this I still could have done on the other one with the other ones. Um, my front's still not great for off-road, but you know, it's the, in my opinion, it's the rear one that's the most important. Almost 100 kilometers breaking them in, and uh, so far they've been uh, nice in the corners. So that has been pretty sweet. Okay, me too. This. Oh yeah, very nice. Here, Bill is. Yes. So uh, I lost another high, half an hour frolicking in the snow there on the edge and making the time lapse, but it was worth my time. I'm already spending an hour longer than expected on the mountain, but that's always the case when you go up a mountain like this. Oh, she had a good pose. Oh, this is a really nice side. Jinchi. Whoa, look at this. Come on, peoples. How good is this? I know in the previous video we had some good stuff, but Who needs Stelvio Pass when you've got this? Our own little carpets. Yeah, into the mist. Oh, it's one misty boy out here. Yeah, those are working. Like, look, there's more than a few rows like this. <laughs> See, it's, it's a previous video all over again. But it's the rocks, the ruggedness. It's this old eroded uh, mountaintop, I reckon. Right? Geologist in the, in the chat, in the comments, please confirm when you have boulders, eroded mountaintops like this means it's like an older mountain, an older formation. Makes this a uh, nice spot up here. Adds to the experience of riding one of these nice winding mountain roads. Reminds me of Eastern Turkey. Look at the map. What have I taught you guys about squigglinesses on maps? That's what you should aim for. Because there's some more. Oh, get on the pegs, sit down, Pedro. Jesus. What are you doing? Look at this. Ah. Oh. <laughs> okay, this is this is a very good side of Serra de Estrela. Sometimes you can't see anything because of the mist, but when it like is borderline, you can and you can't create such a brilliant effect that beats a perfect blue sky day. Uh, I 
gotta watch the twisties. <laughs> I can't watch. No, I can't. Look, this rear Heidi, like I said before, my first one didn't have that middle line. I'm not too happy with the middle line, like I said, that, that's on this version. But, you know, it is Heidi now, and I... <laughs> and I don't expect them... Uh, <coughs> what was that? Mist? I inhaled mist. That was weird. <laughs> that's weird. Like, musty or something? <laughs> anyway. Uh, it is high enough, so I don't expect them to make a bad tire. But from what I've heard, uh, that middle uh, strip makes it last, well, makes it last uh, way longer. But it also probably means that the tire compound is really hard, so it likes to slip in the rain. That's why I was saying, well, maybe this won't be as great in the rain. But you know, yesterday, no issues yet in the rain. I was riding, uh, not like a madman or anything. Uh, but yeah, we'll, 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 whoa, amigo. Oh, yeah, let's pay some attention here, right? Jesus. I think the guy lost his orientation in the mist. Okay, this is a case where you have to pay more attention to the potential other traffic. There's this motto, right, in motorcycling. It's uh, pretty uh, pervasive, uh, if that's the correct word. That goes, ride a motorcycle like everybody's out there to kill you. And, of course, there's some truth to it. And I think it's a good mantra for new riders. But on the other side, I, I don't think that's completely true. Also not good in the sense that you're scaring the shit out of new riders. Maybe that's a good thing, because they have to be, until they get some more experience. But you know, in my, in my experience, um, not everybody on the road is, is, is trying to kill you. And I know it's a hyperbole. I know things can happen out of the blue. But I've ridden in some gnarly ass places. Sometimes, a lot of times, there's actually something organic to, uh, to it. So there, it's the idea of people trying to kill you is almost normal. Because we think it's absolutely mad, but there's a system to it, you know. Like Indonesia, Thailand, India, where I haven't been yet. Even in South America. In the West, it's a bit different because uh, that sort of behavior is not expected. So erratic, dangerous things being done by others kind of happen out of the blue. And there, there's surely there is some, some danger. But it's not like all the time like that. But to get to the main point here is that today, for example, this is this is the kind of place that we saw where okay it's it's misty pay more attention because you don't know what the hell another driver is doing when you got about 50 meters of lesser visibility as you saw the guy ends up on your own on, on your lane which can happen generally on mountains already so even more so in the mist well we don't get to see the twisties but you can't win them all all right I made it down a mountain Hopefully it will begin to clear up. I reckon uh, a lot of the big fog and uh, mist and Serra de Stril and cloudiness is on this side, so this place uh, must catch it often. Oh, look at that, some wet kinderkopjes. Very nice. This nice steel grill. I don't know where we are. What is this town called? I'll put it in the video. For a second I thought, is that a statue of Michael Jackson? Jackson? But then I look at the man's head. Just reminded me of uh, what he used to wear in the 90s. He had like a soldier's costume, right? Let's go. Ah, look at this. I reckon this is another one of the historic towns here. The ones I was talking one or two videos ago about. Alert. I think now we're at about, yeah, I got about 150 kilometers in on the new rear Heidi. That's about broken in, right? Also, this tire is 140 wide because I really wanted a 140 wide Heidi. And that's probably why it already has the, that stripe in the middle. I thought only the 150 used to have that, but now the 140s have that too. So this guy here is uh, what I call a hero. A zero to hero. Very slow in the corners. And then when he gets on the straights, or small straights, boom! It's a front. I had to abort an overtake. You had a lot of those in New Zealand. Again, New Zealand today. Running theme. And, uh... You would have the two lanes sometimes. Whoa, homie. 
Whole meats, okay. <laughs> double, double Manil. <laughs> Almost had Manil crossing the road. It happens. And that's why we have our headlights on on a motorcycle. At least on these kind of these kind of roads. Because um, the lady that came from the car. <laughs> oh sweet. There was a lady in a little car coming ahead. And she was like going like this, slow down, slow down. That's when you know you got the compass above you. God bless you. Brigad Signore. Alright people. It's pretty a decent sized little city here. And uh, my guy, you guys in the state my states might be familiar with the name. Oh, what did I do there? I never know. Because the city is literally called White Castle or Castelo Branco in Portuguese. As a kid, when I heard that name, I did wonder, is there a castle? Well, there should be. Because this uh, place was uh, founded as a Roman fortification and then later was... Uh, oh, look at that. Oh. Can I or can I not? This is a church. Or maybe there's just some old walls here and the castle is gone. I'm not sure. Those look like walls, all right. Yeah, that's a castle. Castle walls. So then when the Knight Templars came in, somewhere in 12, 13th century they built the castle and the walls and uh, I don't know they were probably too late for for some early kicking the moor out Reconquista but the knights from all over Europe did help out to uh, take uh, Portugal back from the moors actually crusades happened uh, this way but you don't hear a lot about those so a lot of crusaders actually also passed through uh, Portugal and helped out too let's go have a look quick look see and then go look for some uh, off-road oh it's misty out still not that much to see there we go oh nice Always have to get on top. <laughs> nice. Bem-vindo a Castelo Branco. 